Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you, dear God, that you were there all the time. Father, we thank you, dear God, that you did not leave us. Father, when we were lost. Thank you, dear God, that you did not abandon us when we needed you the most. Father, we thank you, dear God, that Father, you took us just as we were. Dirty. Filthy. Unclean. But Father, you cleaned us up. Father, we thank you. Thank you, dear God, for getting in the pit with us. And Father, lifting us from the pit of despair. And Father, putting us in a place where we had deliverance. Now, Father, we can't pay you for everything that you've done for us. We can't pay you for every mountain that you carried us over. Every tear that you wiped from our eyes, we can't pay you, Lord. But Father, we want to tell you thank you. Father, we really, really love you because you first loved us. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a word for us on this Sunday morning found in a very familiar passage of scripture. I want to look at Job. Chapter 1. And I want to read verses 20 through 22 from the New International Version. Job, chapter 1, verse 20 through verse 22, reading from the New International Version. And you'll find these words printed. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked, I came from my mother's womb. And naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. You may be seated in the presence of our God. For the time that we have, I want to preach from this topic, a prescription for pain. That's what I want to talk about. A prescription for pain. It has been a painful year. No one has been able to escape pain. We felt it all around this world. Pain. We have felt it even on last week. That hurt, that will not seem to go away, that hurt, that late in the midnight hours awakens you from your sleep, and there's nothing you can take. Pain that's so severe 
that you will find yourself doing things that you never thought you'd ever do. Pain has a way of turning people that are calm and relaxed and will have them on the edge. Pain. There is a prescription for pain. When we look at the book of Job, Job, from the beginning, it appears as if it is a story about good people suffering. And it beckons the old question, why do good people suffer? From the outset, we are faced with the fact that this good man is suffering. But when we get to the end of the book of Job, we understand that it's not about good people suffering, but it's about God's sovereignty. Yes. Yes. It's about the fact that God is in control yes. and that God is in charge. Yes. He's in charge of your life. He's in charge of my life. He's in charge of everything in this universe. Yes. Job teaches us that God is sovereign. In chapter 1, verses 1 through verse 5, we see Job's portfolio. We see Job's portfolio. We see Job, his life is laid out. He is a faithful man. He is a family man. He is a man of faith. And he is a man that is financially blessed. He has a portfolio that all of us would aspire to have. Job has everything that a man could want. He has this portfolio but in verses 6 through verse 12, we learn about Job's prosecutor. Yeah. Some people can stand to see you bless. Yeah, I wish I had time to drop anchor there and deal with that. But uh, some people don't like the idea that blessings run you down <laughs> and overtake you. And one of your uh, uh, most well-known enemies that does not want to see you blessed is Satan. Yeah. yeah. Satan shows up at the conference of the angels. And someone would say, why does Satan show up in the conference of angels? Well, you must remember that Satan was an angel. And even though he has been banned, he still got access. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I wish I could stop right there and tell you that you ought to be thankful yeah. uh, that even when you do wrong, you may be banned, but you still got access. Yeah. Even when you do wrong, even when you are in the wrong, even when you go the wrong way, you ought to be thankful that God still gives you access. Yeah. Yeah. Satan shows up. He said, God, the only reason Job doing what he's doing is because you've been good to him. Yeah. But if you would put your hand on everything that he has and strike it, he said, I'll curse you to his face. Yeah. Job, as this prosecutor who is bringing charges against him to the highest court in the land. And don't you be ignorant. Don't you think that he's only doing it to Job. But he's doing the same thing against you and me. The Bible said that he daily, oh, help me in this house, bringing charges against God's elite. He daily telling God, God, look at that, what they doing. Look at that, what they are saying. Every day, trying to prosecute us. Before God. And we move from. Verse 
verses 6 to 12 to verses 13 to 19. And we are introduced to Job's predicament. Because of the prosecutor bringing the charges, Job finds himself now in a predicament that he had nothing to do with. God allows Satan to touch everything that Job has except his soul. God, God removes the head from around. Thank you. I wish I had time to tell you today that sometimes the only reason that things are not falling apart for you, the only reason that you still got what you got is because God got a hedge around you. You, you ought to be thankful that God got a hedge around you because a hedge will protect you from things that you didn't even see coming. A hedge will protect you from things that you don't even know that's around you. And thank God that God has not removed the hedge from around us because many of us would have lost some things a long time ago. Many of us would have thrown in the towel a long time ago. But thank God that God got us hedged in. And the only way that Satan can get to you and me is that God allows it. Oh, brothers and sisters, that's good news right there because that lets me know that if God allows it, God knows that you can handle it. God would not send it to you if he was not going to take you through it. You got to know that whatever happens in your life, whatever comes up in your life, God has already made the evaluation about you and he says, uh, you're strong enough to handle it. You've been in with me long enough to know that I will make a way for you somehow. You may not know how, but you all know by now that when trouble comes in your life, you know that God will make a way. I've been with him long enough now to know that whatever comes is only what he allows. And if he allows it, I got the strength to make it through it. And my God shall somebody ought to help me supply all my need according to his riches in glory. Job is in a predicament in verses 13 through 19. And when we get to verse 28, Job is in pain. The Bible says that he tore his robe, shaved his head, which is a sign of grief. It's a sign that he is having a painful predicament. But when we look at verses 20b through verse 22, Job gives us a prescription for the pain and the predicament that the prosecutor has brought before him. I suggest to you today that I want to give you this prescription. And I am convinced that if you would take these three pills <laughs> every day, I am convinced that it will alleviate, if not eradicate, your pain. The first pill that you need to take is turning to God. You, you, you need to make sure that no matter what you're going through, no matter what comes your way, when it's all said and done, turn to God. The Bible says that in 20B, Job turned to God. He, 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 he didn't fall apart when he lost his possessions. He, he didn't fall apart when he lost his prosperity. But when he lost his people, the Bible said that that's when Job got up and said, I can't take no more. Has anybody ever been there before? 
Yeah, he, he got up there and said, Lord, I can't take no more. And Job did something that many of us would not have done. Uh, Job took a pill. A pill called worship. Where he turned to God. And, and brothers and sisters, no matter what you're going through in your life, you got to find the strength to go down and worship God. And in turning to God, it means that you must release, resist, and relay. You must resist, you must release, resist, and rely. Yeah, you must release what's going on. And you must resist the urge to pick it back up again. And you must rely on God to get you through it. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7 says it like this. Cast all your anxiety, all your care on him because he cares for you. Job said, Lord, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I'm turning to you. And my brothers and sisters, I don't know what kind of pain you are in this morning, but I do know that if you would take the pill of turning to God, he will help alleviate the pain that you're feeling. Not only must we turn to God by taking our first pill, but the second pill that Job tells us that we need to take is thanking God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to take the pill of thanking God. I know it's rough, and I know it's tough, but it's not what it could have been. Yeah, yeah, you may not have everything that your heart's desire, but thank God you got what you got. Amen. I, I might not have no mansion, but I thank God for a roof over my head. I, I thank God that uh, I may not have a million dollars yet. But I thank God for the two dollars I got in my pocket. You see, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation, you got to be able to thank God not for what you lost, but you ought to thank God for what you still got. Yeah, 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 yeah. Job has lost his possessions. He lost his popularity and his prosperity. He lost the people that he loved. But Job, the Bible says, he praised God. He blessed God. He thanked God. He was not thanking God uh, for what uh, he was going through. But he was thanking God in what he was going through. No, I'm not going to thank God because I lost my daddy. But I'm going to thank God in the midst of losing my daddy. I'm not going to thank God for losing my job. But I'm going to thank God in the midst of losing my job. You see, we got to learn how to thank God. Not because of, but in spite of. And in the midst of. Thanking God, thanking God ought to be continually. Yes, yes. It ought to be constantly. Yes. And it ought to be consistently. Yes. Amen. I, I ought not just thank him for the good. Yes. I ought just not thank him in the good. But I ought to thank him in the bad times as well. Yes, yes, yes. I ought not just thank him when the sun is shining. Uh, but I need to thank him even when the rain is falling. Yes. We got to consistently give God the thanks. Thessalonians 5 and 18 says it like this. Give thanks in all things, in all circumstances, in all situations, in all problems. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. He said that even though you're going through you still got to give me thanks. Because I woke you up this morning. That's reason enough to give him thanks. He's 
started you on your way and that's reason enough to give him thanks. He put food on your table. He put clothes on your back, shoes on your feet. Gave you a car to ride in. And that's reason enough to give him thanks. And somebody said, if he don't do nothing else for me, I can thank him. Because he's already done enough. Bible says that Job praised God in the midst of his pain. Yeah, he takes that pill of thanking God. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Because tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. But Lord, you been my protection every step of the way. And I gotta say, thank you for all that you've done for me. If we would take that pill of thanking God, I believe that it would alleviate, if not eradicate, our pain. Third and final pill that we need to take, Job shows us, is the pill of trusting God. The pill of trusting God. Verse 22 said that Job, in all this, he did not see it by wrongly accusing God of wrongdoing. In other words, Job said, I don't understand what's going on. I don't know what's going on. But God, I trust you. I can't see my way through it. I don't know how I'm going to get through it. But I know that I trust you. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You see, when we are in a painful situation, and we don't know what's going to take place, that's when we must trust God the more. Because, because we all know that he did not bring us this far to leave us now. We all know by now that he didn't bring me through this and he didn't bring me through that just to leave me right now. You got to trust him. Even when you can't trace his hand, you got to trust his heart to know that God is working it out for you right now. You got to trust him. Job no, said, I trust you, God. Even though I'm in pain, I trust you. And trusting God means that we must trust him completely, concurrently, and confidently. confidently. We must trust him completely. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understandings. We must trust him concurrently. That means that at the same time that we're trusting God, we're in pain. At the same time that I don't know how it's going to work out, I'm still trusting God. At the same time that I don't see nothing but darkness right now, I know that the light will shine again. I got to trust him at the same time. And I must trust him confidently, knowing that he will come through. The writer says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will. Some translations say he shall. It's a done deal. Yeah. You ain't got to guess about it. You ain't got to ponder about it. He said he will do it. Yeah. He will lead you in the right way. Yeah. He will make your paths straight. Yeah. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, if you would do that for your pain, yeah. I am convinced yeah. that God will alleviate, yeah. if not eradicate, your pain. Yes, yes. You've got to yes, yes, 
Turn to God. You've got to uh, thank God. And you've got to trust God. And I guarantee you, it'll make you feel better. There was a story that was told about this man who was in excruciating pain. The story said that the man was in such excruciating pain that he went to the doctor. Went to the doctor. The doctor asked him, what's the problem? And the man said to the doctor, Doc, I'm hurting everywhere. And the doctor said, I ain't never heard nobody that's hurting everywhere. <laughs> so the doctor told the man, let's do an exam. He said, take your finger and touch your forehead. And the man screamed out in excruciating pain. The doctor said, take your finger and touch his shoulder. And let's see how that feels. The man screamed out again in excruciating pain. He said, touch your stomach. And let's see if that's better. He touched his stomach and the man screamed out in excruciating pain. He said, I, I said, I don't understand this. He, he said, touch your thigh with your finger. And the man touched his thigh and tears started coming in his eyes because the pain was so severe. He said, let me do one more examination and I'll give you my prognosis. He said, bend over and touch your toes. The man bent over, touched his toes, and started crying out in pain. Doc shook his head. He said, I've never seen anything like this in my life. In all my years of practicing, never seen nobody that was hurting all over. He said, let me try one more thing. The man took it, the doctor took his finger, touched his finger, and the man cried like a newborn baby. The doc said to him, it's not that you are hurting all over. He said, the only thing that's wrong is you got a dislocated finger. <laughs> and because you got a dislocated finger, everything that you touch, you think is bringing you pain. Oh, I stopped by to tell somebody here this morning. You ain't hurting everywhere. It's just one place where you got a problem. At. It's just one place where there's a dislocation. At. It's just one place where there's so much pain that you're feeling that you think that it's hurting you all over. But if you would go to the doctor, Dr. Jesus, he, he can diagnose your case. He'll let you know that it's not your whole life that's in pain, but you did it with abandonment issues. If you would go to Dr. Jesus, he would tell you that your whole life is not in disarray, but you did it with daddy and mama issues. If you would go to Dr. Jesus, he would tell you that the problem and the pain Feeling is from one area in your life. And the thing that you need to know is he's able to bind up that hurt and he'll give you a new lease on life. They call it pain management. You want to manage your pain? Turn to God in your most painful situation. Thank God in your most painful situation. And trust God in your most painful situation. And I am a living witness that He'll help you. Alleviate yeah. or eradicate yeah. the 
the pain that you're feeling. Thank you for pain management. Thank you for being the doctor that's able to heal us where we hurt. Father, you know where we're having problems. Father, you know where we got the issue. Oh God, with your hands of mercy, touch. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, heal that area that's got us tripped up. That we might be able to God to know that as bad as it has been, that we might know that it's painful as it feels. Father, we'll know that God, you'll get us through it. Somebody need to know today that God, that Father, the pain you know is real. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, that mother that's crying over the loss of a child. God let them know that she can live through the pain. That mother who shot is locked. Oh God. The pain is real. And God, I don't know but one thing. I know you can ease the pain. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, wrap your arms around me. Wrap your arms around both mothers. Oh God, let them know. Jesus' name.